Well, um, hello and welcome to the Familiar Evils YouTube channel, as usual as is tradition. Um, <laughs> today's video is, uh, you know, if you've, if you've been paying attention at all, I'm not, you know, I'm among the last people to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it anyways, um, about the OGL, uh, Open Game License. And what's going on with uh, the OGL 1.1? 1. 1. Uh, there is plenty of other people who have talked about this, and I'm going to put a link down in the description to um, a good article and a video or two that really goes over it better than I can. I mean, I understand the gist of it, but if you haven't seen it already, definitely go check them out. But I'm going to talk about the briefly of like what it means just in case you don't want to go watch those videos and I'm going to talk about the future of this channel depending on what goes forward um, yeah uh, this is definitely not the video I wanted to make as you can see um, I love D&D &D. I, I grew up with it for you know I started in second edition of course I didn't play every I didn't play third edition 3.5 or 4.0 um, and I came back in 5th edition, but it has become an extremely important part of my life since like 2018, so it's, you know, God, it's, you know, 4 or 5 years now since I, you know, started playing D&D 5th edition, and I made a lot of really good friends in it, and, uh, you know, not all the content I use is Wizards of the Coast, you know, I talk about Sly Flourish a lot, you know, the Lazy Dungeon Master, he has his books with actual adventures in it that are made for 5th edition. They link to the SRD, and I'm pretty sure use the OGL. Um, but the open, the OGL, or the Open Gaming License, is a 900 word um, legal contract. It's not even a contract, it's just a legal document that says that people who put this document in their work can use the game systems and stuff, you know, so use fifth edition game systems, which has created a renaissance of uh, amazing third party published games. Uh, you know, you get, like I said, you have Sly Flourish, you have Kobold Press, um, you know, I think even like some of Crit Roll's books might use the OGL. Um, all these Kickstarters you see. Um, like the taverns one, uh, there's this, Mr. Rex has this coming out soon, which is so sad to see that it's coming out the day that this apparently the contracts are going to be changing, which could affect him a lot. Um, I love his channel and there's so many great people, you know, you probably have subscribed to more people than me, I'm assuming. And the D if you're subscribing to me for D&D, &D, then you must like D&D &D because I'm a pretty small content creator at the moment. I hope to be bigger one day, and I had hoped that it'd be bigger with D&D. &D. Um, but yeah, so basically, Wizards of the Coast, it's coming out for, coming out third party publishers, and um, even people who are doing these things for free, you know, they're not making a profit. Uh, they're coming at them for their income, so for royalties, and then they're coming at them for their content, which is, you know, it's it's already bad enough to ruin the original OGL and has created this renaissance within the gaming industry for D&D &D and which is why it's, it's <laughs> just baffles me. But then they want to claim rights over the content that the third party publishers make and then publish it however, whenever they want royalty free. And so it's like, including the people who do it for free. So it's like, well then what's the, you know, what's the point of publishing your own stuff? Really all you're doing is working for wizards. You're working for wizards for free. You are, you know, essentially an unlicensed contractor for these people and it's insanity. And so, to make a long story short, I don't know if I'll be continuing to make videos and reviews for D&D content, which is a real shame because I just finished reading um, the new Dragonlance book and I wanted to do a review on it. And I'm not going to talk about how I felt about it, 
until I if I make a review, and the only reason I will make a review for that book or continue to promote any D and D um, work is if OGL 1.1 is not released. That they completely scrap this idea of OGL 1.1 and they keep the OGL as is. Uh, but I don't know if that's going to be enough for a lot of people. I don't know. It's going to leave me really skeptical about how much I want to do content for, you know, Wizards, Hasbro's, con you know, D&D. If they don't make one additional change. Because there is a change that needs to happen to the OGL. And it's one word. Irrevocable. They need to put irrevocable in that document so that people know that they aren't going to have the rug pulled out from under them. Um, now, this is a leak. It's not confirmed. Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro have not said that this is real. But um, <laughs> it looks a lot like the GSL, which was something that happened in 4th edition, which severely harmed them, and which just blows my mind that they want to do it again. So it's, it's not something they haven't done before, tried to do before uh, in some fashion. And then also, uh, like one of the game's directors or whatever, somebody from... Uh, Kickstarter had come out and said that the reason the Kickstarter percentage on royalties was 20% instead of 25 is because they had battled for it. They had gotten it lower, which is a strong indicator that this, some of this, if not all of it, is true. It's definitely, it's corroborated the leak. And it's, it's concerning. And Wizards of the Coast hasn't said anything, and I think you know, silence is not an admonition of guilt, uh, but it can definitely look like it. And I think Wizards knows that. I think Wizards knows that their silence is being seen this way. And I just, I don't trust that it's not true. I think it's, this is a symptom of the gaming industry as a whole. Uh, this new executive, uh, I think at Hasbro who had come from Microsoft and worked in um, on Xbox and she was like a major proponent in uh, microtransactions and stuff like that uh, this is the, the very kind of stuff this is the culture of these people and I think as a gaming community not just as TTRPGs but video games as well because I used to be a very big gamer when it came to video games you know I grew up in I basically grew up in a computer cafe my dad owned a computer cafe I started with the original Starcraft 1 before even Brood War I was playing Counter-Strike the original you know Half-Life you know Half-Life Deathmatch <laughs> when I was a kid you know these were the games I grew up off of Warcraft Warcraft 3 World of Warcraft um, and I dropped Blizzard because they became greedy self-serving uh, just absolute corporatist madmen uh, and I got sick of it and I haven't paid for a single thing with them and it's, just, it's going to be the same thing with D&D I owe no loyalty to anybody no matter how much I love their product if they're willing to destroy the trust of their community then they aren't owed any kind of loyalty and I know I only have about 46 people. I just got a new subscriber, so thank you uh, for subscribing. Uh, and I hope you all continue to do so, uh, or people continue to subscribe to this channel, as I am going to still review stuff. Um, but you, you can make your own choices. Some of you may be new DMs. I know some of you may have been from when I had advertised on Reddit with some new uh, Dragons of Stormwreck Isle maps. Please, like, if you can consider, don't support Wizards if they do this. Please. They, there has to be a monetary snapback on them. I'm not going to, if this goes through, I will not buy their next book. I will not go see their movie. I will not buy the book after that or the book after that. I won't even mention their products. I know I'm a tiny person within this large pool of people. You know, you have... Other people with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of subscribers saying the same thing, making far more reach. But every little drop counts at this point. I'm going to put in the link below a, 
um, petition, and I hate petitions. So if I if I am advertising a petition, you know it's bad because I think typically petitions are just stupid. But every ounce of ire and hatred needs to be pushed on these people so that they understand just how severely bad this will be for them. They should not be making any money for doing this. Their sales should plummet. You know, I'm the kind of person these days when it comes to gaming corporations like Blizzard and you know all these other people and now Wizards, just any corporation that does this, I'm a scorched earth kind of person generally you know and, and that's a little extreme i know for many people it's a little extreme but i'm the kind of person that if you are going to do this to your community so that you can essentially rip the money from them then i think that as a corporation i think hasbro and wizards should essentially dissolve i think that there should be such vicious lashing out back at them that they make hardly any money off their products anymore that Dungeons and Dragons as an IP becomes utterly and completely um, unprofitable for them that nobody buys their products anymore it's so bad that they have to go sell it off and if they go sell it off to another company who's willing to learn the lesson from Hasbro and WotC that you don't do this to your community all the better for the tabletop role playing genre as a whole um People like that cannot get away with this. I, I can't imagine, you know, I'm sure many of you are video gamers as well. I can't imagine that you are particularly thrilled about the poop sandwiches that these companies give you. And we as consumers eventually have to decide what we are willing to put up with. Um, and I know it can be hard. And that's completely up to you. I'm not saying you're a bad person if you go buy a new D&D book. I'm not saying you're a bad person if you're playing, you know, World of Warcraft or whatever, or, you know, whatever game it is that you're, you know, doing. And, you know, they have the microtransactions galore. That is your choice. It is your personal choice. But you have to decide what kind of gaming community you want to continue into the future. And the way it is now is extremely predatory because they can know they know they can get away with it. You know, this this woman from Microsoft comes from a culture of where, you know, she doesn't play video games. I can guarantee you the probably the only video game she might have ever played was on her phone. You know, she she might have played, you know, some little button game, whatever, something stupid. They don't care. And they don't understand the community. They don't really truly understand any of that. They don't understand the OGL and how important it is. All they notice is the money. It's all they care about. They're not gamers. They only care about the profits. And unfortunately, that leaves it up to the community to decide whether or not they're willing to put up with it. And I wholeheartedly endorse not putting up with it. We have to come out against them. And I'm going to, I'm at, at this point, I'm kind of repeating myself. So I'm going to try and keep this a little short. Um, I don't know how much more I'm going to talk about. But, you know, I'll go on to now at this point, my, the future of this channel, depending on if the OGL goes through, uh, OGL 1.1. Um, there is a lot of third-party content um, that doesn't need to worry about the OGL. Uh, I backed the Kickstarter for the Avatar The Last Airbender tabletop role-playing game, and I haven't really gone through it yet. And I have the PDFs. I'm still waiting for it to be mailed to me uh, in the physical copy. So if you're Avatar fans, and you may be, because a lot of us nerds are big you know, Avatar The Last Airbender fans, uh, that would I think you'll enjoy that a lot. It's a completely different system than D&D 5th Edition. Uh, and I'm going to review that. So you have that to look forward to. And then um, I'm going to start looking into Pathfinder and how all that works. Now, there's some discussion as to whether or not the OGL might affect Pathfinder. I don't know. Um, I don't know if Wizards and Hasbro can even get away with this. Because, and I'm not a lawyer, so I may be wrong. But they have 23 years of precedence with the OGL. 
allowing third-party publishers to basically just use their IP, just use it for 20 30 years. And so the question kind of arises is as to whether or not their IP is basically lapsed. You know, you, you can't, it seems a little bogus that you can have 23 years of allowing people to just freely use your IP and then just say, oh, no, never mind. We have, we own all your content and we uh, want royalties from you, this, that, and the other thing. Um, you know, it reminds me of the reason Blizzard Entertainment gave for crushing one of the uh, private servers, Nostalrius, uh, for Classic World Warcraft before they had come out with Classic WoW. And they had said, because if they don't protect their IP, they can lose rights to it. Now, a lot of people were upset, you know, and found that kind of like a BS reason. And it, but it wasn't totally a BS reason. And eventually it came out with Classic WoW, and that was a good idea for them. And I played it for a little bit before I just dropped the whole genre, or just the whole company, because of just a myriad of things I'm not going to get into. Um, but I, I'm curious as to whether or not something similar applies here. You know, 23 years of precedence of just allowing people to use your IP, does your IP at that point lapse? And I think there's an argument to be had um, that that may be the case. Also, apparently people are saying that you cannot um, copyright game systems, that it's, it's not something that you can do. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens, but I think that if Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, whether or not they can get away with this legally, even if they can't, if this is something they legitimately tried to do, I think that they should no longer be trusted as the curators of this genre. I think that they're, as I said before, the profits that they make off of D&D should collapse so completely and utterly that they have no reason to keep it anymore and to just sell it off to somebody who can be trusted with it. Um, it's it's a real shame. So, yeah, um, I look forward to publishing some more videos. I'm still going to keep up with the Chris Perkins um, DM uh, videos because I think those are system agnostic. You know, it's it's still adjacent. You know, Chris Perkins works for Wizards, but. I don't want to stop those videos because I don't feel like they're very, they're not too um, representative of D&D &D, and I think it's super useful for everybody. Um, so we'll see where things go from here. And until next time, guys, peace out.